Hello, hello everybody. Welcome to DuckTales. This is our series where we go behind the scenes of DuckDuckGo. I'm the founder of DuckDuckGo. I have Rachel here who works at our company. Hi, Rachel. Hi. Um, so, you know, DuckTales is really about discussing, you know, the technology we use, kind of the people working on it, um, how we're building privacy tools. Um, we hope, you know, join us. You'll hear about all aspects of DuckDuckGo, essentially. Uh, but today, um, we are talking about AI a bit, and in particular, a feature that we recently released um, that allows you to filter out AI-generated images on our search results. So taking a step back, um, you know, our approach to AI is, we wrote a whole post on this if you want to check it out, maybe we can figure out how to put things in show notes, but um, it's three things, uh, private, uh, useful, and optional. So uh, private, Kind of goes without saying, uh, that's what we do at DuckDuckGo, but we're AI in particular, you know, we're focused on, um, you know, Rachel, you know this, so I'm just saying this for everybody else listening. <laughs> but uh, we're no, focused, you tell. Yeah, we're focused on keeping it anonymous and also, um, you know, not trading on your data. Um, and then useful is we're really trying to make, you know, AI tools that are actually useful, not just for the sake of using them, but, um, you know, just think of making them like some other companies, but just so they're actually useful. So on the search engine, you know, we have answers now at the top um, that kind of help you figure out what you're trying to look for without having to click through a lot of results. Um, although you're welcome to, of course, and the sources are clearly labeled there. Um, but uh, the third pillar is optional. So not everybody wants to use AI. We realize that. Um, and so we've been approaching it by making everything optional. Um, and so you can turn off those answers at the top of the search engine. You can turn off our chat product, duck.ai, um, which brings us to the AI image filter, which is a little different type of feature because it's mm -hmm. not something that um, we're doing generation of images, although we're probably gonna end up doing that sometime. It's more in an optional camp taking you know AI away if you really would like to. You wanna explain it a little bit? Yeah, yeah. So the AI image filter, um, actually, let me just share my screen so I can quickly demo it as we talk about it. Um, so the AI image filter is a feature you can find on our image filter bar. Uh, so up here, uh, this is the filter here. And you can also also find this feature on our user settings page. Um, but yeah, it's literally what the name suggests. It's a uh, a filter that filters out AI generated images um, at like a high level. Uh, you can put in a query and uh, if we detect that you've enabled the feature, then, um, you know, our images service is going to do some basic pattern matching against a block list that we have um, and return the filtered results. Um, and the block list itself uh, is actually from an open source project called uBlock Origin, huge AI in all caps block list. And um, I did want to take a second to give a shout out to the project maintainer, Lee Lavish, and the 40 plus contributors to the project. Um, I think they started this project like a year ago, um, and they've been doing a great job frequently updating the list. Um, so huge props to them for helping make this feature possible. So great query. I have two cats. Uh, <laughs> are the is the filter list that you know we're currently using for this? Is that at a domain level? So mm -hmm. essentially domain, um, like the the file of the image, um, and where that domain or where the file lives in that domain. Yeah. So it could be it's it's kind of like the general U block rules. It's like a regex type of thing, but it could be at mm -hmm. the level or URL pattern, whatever. Exactly the URL pattern matching. That's right. exactly it. Got it. And so it, it works now. Where if it's on that list and you select this filter, we'll just remove it client side from you. Exactly. Cool. And have we looked at other lists? I mean, is that like the main list we found? Did we kind of look at other things? Are yeah, this was. This was the main list that um, we had found. There are definitely um, a handful of other lists that were maybe not as frequently updated. And so I think this one um, was probably the most reliable one to, to use. Got it. And let's speak to why people might want to use this. So I, it's gotten 
a well first of all let's say that it's gotten a lot of support when we put this out mm -hmm. support. I'm, gonna stop. I'm gonna stop sharing the screen okay, now. Yeah. it was high on like reddit technology i saw all sorts of articles about it and it's being reported in our subreddit a lot that people really appreciate the future um and kind of to think about why you know there's clearly um there's clearly value in ai generated images because you can get things that right didn't exist and so there i think there's there's definitely value in seeing AI images but then there's also value in when you want to use something in real life that it wasn't AI. you want to know that it wasn't ai generated um, right yeah i mean i think i mean one of the big reasons why we built it was because we were seeing a huge spike um from users about not wanting to say i see ai and it's understandable like so many things on the internet now is generated by ai and it can be really mentally exhausting to have to process like is this ai or is this not like i just want to find a thing that i'm looking for so um yeah the users were really vocal about just not wanting to deal with it interesting and then so um i understand that we're you know certainly after the support, it's a feature where we're definitely going to keep. And so now we're also trying to improve it if we can. Uh, mm -hmm. Where, kind of what areas of improvement are you looking towards that we're exploring? Yeah. Um, so as soon as we launched, we got immediate feedback from users again on like little things that we could do to improve the feature. Um, I think one of the most frequently requested feature was the ability to flag um, images that they believe were AI generated. So we're, I'm actually going to roll this out <laughs> right after we finish recording this. So there's, we're going to have that ability for flagging images. Um, and I think once we start getting reports and there's a lot of different directions we can go from there, like if we get enough reports on a specific domain, we'll probably do some sort of vetting process to improve the block list itself. Um, I think we could also potentially allow for users to create their own custom block list, sort of like how we allow users to exclude certain do domains for organics. Um, and I think more like in the long term, we do have uh, people on the team exploring other open source solutions and like classifiers um, and also like the image metadata, like how we can leverage that to better determine if an AI, an image is AI generated. Um, but it's still like a matter of figuring out what the right balance is between those options, just cause like image metadata, like for example, anyone can tamper with the image, right? They can strip the metadata, they can edit it or crop it or whatever. So it's not like you know, it's still a pretty fragile source of truth. And even the classifiers, like best ones, maybe will get 80, 90% of accuracy, but it's, it's not gonna be bulletproof. Um, so yeah, we're trying to figure out what the combination is the right one um, for getting enough accuracy and also keeping cost <laughs> and uh, um, latency in mind. Yeah, so a couple follow-ups on that. So I think it is important for us to be clear that it's definitely not 100% accurate in either direction. Uh -huh. They could let things through that are AI generated and that can also theoretically flag some things that are AI generated that are not AI generated. And so yeah, that's yeah. that's effort here and we're gonna try to improve it, but it's it probably will never be 100% accurate. No, I, I mean, it's sort of, um... Yeah, the problem is really interesting. And in some ways I'm like wondering if it's probably a longer discussion, but, um, but like if we don't have some sort of change at like, a, I don't know if this is the right term, but like at a policy or an infrastructure level on how we actually uh, ma maintain. Yeah. Right, right, right. Like we need a consistent way to be able to really know this, uh, if the data on the image is reliable and, um, it's sort of like playing whack-a-mole right now, but if we can like contain the mole, um, then it would be maybe a little bit easier. But right now, if you know we don't have that, and I think the issue will unfortunately become more prevalent and even harder to solve. I have heard some rumors, at least, and some reports of some standards being worked on in that regard. Mm -hmm. It possibly would help. The other thing you mentioned was, you know, we're using the block list, which is obviously kind of on or off of it. So it's very fast. Whereas if we were starting to use classifiers, 
that might be too slow in real time yeah. to like do it on the search results and then exactly it's also too expensive to offer yeah. at least and so i think that's the trade-off there with the classifier it's also interesting to note of using ai to stop seeing ai generated images <laughs> the irony there yeah the irony there but yeah, yeah exactly but i mean if it if it works that, i think that is an interesting avenue but yeah i think it might be there's a speed trade-off there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah especially because we're dealing with like hundreds of millions of images a day like even even with a good caching layer, I think it'll, it'll still be a difficult problem to, to solve there. Cool. Well, um, is there anything else from working on this so far you want to flag anything interesting or, um, I don't know that we didn't talk about. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing is like the problem itself is super interesting for me personally, though, if I could share, um, like when I started this project, uh, I was only four months in at DuckDuckGo, so like everything was surprising. And then I was still getting to know the product and the users, but it's kind of a funny story how the project even kind of came to be. Um, like uh, we knew this problem was happening. It, I think like over 50% of user complaints about images was about and not wanting to see AI. So we knew we had to do something. It's just that the problem was huge. And then like we talked about it for a while, kind of punted on it. And then summer came around with the hack days um, and I kind of decided to revisit the problem. And I think the interesting thing about a hackathon is that it's just two days. So like you're really forced to think like, what am I actually going to get done here? <laughs> um, uh, and coincidentally at the time I was like looking into a bug that users were reporting. So there were some users who already had uh, this block list and the uBlock or browser extension installed and they were dealing with some bugs and I was looking into and that's actually how I came across um, the block list. And I figured, you know, if there are users who are going out of their way to install this extension, put this list on, and this is the solution that's sort of working for them for the time being, like, why not make this more widely and easily accessible for our users? So um, the solution actually was really inspired by our users. And I really love how this feature was like end to end, just like purely user driven. Like it's it was built based on user feedback. The solution itself was something that users came up with essentially. Um, and then even now after we've launched, we're constantly like listening to what um, users are suggesting to, to help move the, the feature further along. That's awesome. Um, yeah, future for these episodes should definitely ask where this project came from. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to the uh, list of questions we need to ask. But uh, yeah, it's great that you took the initiative to do it. It's also great to hear that it came out of user feedback in that channel and the hack mm -hmm. days are working too. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Like, a, yeah, that's a great story all around. So, okay. So thanks for coming on. Um, whoever is watching this, thanks for joining our episode number two, I guess, of DuckTales, but we'll do many more. Yeah.